Audiophile headphones involve preferences. Some of them are detailed, some are wide, some dynamic, deep or extended well. Aria Stealth has it all for just $759. Let's talk about it. It's built to be lightweight, not premium. That's probably why you don't immediately feel that it's a premium product when you pick it up. On the other hand, it's the cheapest headphone from Hyphaman that's so comfortable. It features their highest-end headband style, which has a suspension strap design. It allows for full 360-degree cup rotation, tilt and size adjustment. This, combined with these large ear caps and low weight, makes it extremely comfortable, even for extended listening sessions. This headband, unlike lower-end ones, is a bit different. Besides allowing for swivel, it also has a bit different shape, making its clamp force more evenly spread, but it kind of looks silly when you wear it. However, when it's on a headphone stand, it looks very nice. It's all blacked out for a stealthy, pun intended, look. One more difference between this headband and the cheaper ones is that it's also padded on the side that touches your head. There is just a thin layer of soft foam that helps to even out the pressure just a little bit more. It's not clamping super hard, it's more in the lower medium territory, I would say. The pads are, of course, huge. Good luck finding a headphone with larger pads than these. They are also a hybrid of three materials, which is a thing Hyphaman likes to do. The only thing I'm not a fan of is one small aspect of its appearance, namely the ear caps material and color. It's not true black, more like a gunmetal color which upon closer inspection looks a bit cheap, but it does its job just fine. For the connectors, there are regular 3.5mm jacks, one on each ear cap, which allows for a balanced connection with an aftermarket cable or a single-ended connection with the included one. Hyphaman are known for their ergonomically problematic cables. They used to offer the copper-colored ones, with the conductor sitting freely inside a long time ago, which, I have to say, were quite terrible. Then, they switched to something very simple, just regular, black, rubberized cables. That was nothing special, however, in this case, it can be a compliment, as it solved most of the issues with the previous version. The cable we are getting in the box now is yet another improvement. It has a material braiding over it, making it feel much nicer and more premium, while adding a bit to the ergonomics, as the cable doesn't have as much memory. There is still some, but it's not as bad. The connectors are generally decent, but the quarter inch jack has a huge strain relief. All sorts of trickle-down goodies can be found there starting from the window shade grills, that offer special geometry made to decrease reflections, which are detrimental to optimal sound quality. Luckily enough, they are blacked out, unlike the Anandas or the Edition XS. Then, as the name suggests, we have Stealth Magnets. It's the first iteration of Aria with this tech. It allows the sound waves to pass through them without generating any sorts of interference, to create an acoustically transparent design. Lastly, it's equipped with a nanometer thickness diaphragm for faster transient response, more details and lower distortion. All that, in theory, means that Hyphaman put all their best stuff in there to make a very good headphone at a price point much lower than a flagship. And they did it without cutting down on the features, just to get you to spend more. Its frequency response ranges from 8Hz up to 65kHz. That's crazy. This driver is capable of doing pretty much everything it's asked to do. And it does it quite efficiently, with a sensitivity of 90 decibels per milliwatt. Not the highest, but quite high for a planar, and an impedance of 32 ohms. Again, not the lowest, but pretty low for what it is. This combo makes the Aria greatly benefit from good and powerful amplifiers. But you don't have to go crazy. It's not that picky about the amplification quality. I expected it to sound a bit bright, like most Hyphaman's planars do. However, in reality, it's very difficult to call it a bright headphone. It's leaning on the warmer and fuller presentation in comparison to other headphones from this company. 
It isn't soft, recessed or lean in the top end. Likewise, it retains all that while lacking the typical boost in the treble that a lot of people find fatiguing. Generally, it's a very tonally balanced sound, with just a slight dip in the upper mid-range, that can be described as starting the ear gain region about 1 kHz later than Harman target calls for. The bass is very well extended, down to 20 Hz. It's fast and transparent, but doesn't offer a sense of weight. It's mostly true to the recording. The vocal presentation is good, yet slightly less weighty than you would expect. In terms of the soundstage, I've heard that the stealth magnets shrink it down quite a bit. At least in the stealth magnet edition area, it's not super wide soundstaging. But it can get out of your head quite easily, simply not too far out. But what it can lack in the soundstage, it more than makes up in the precise imaging. It's very nice with lots of places where sounds can be. In most songs, it gives you an impression of being a real, three-dimensional experience. I would say that, if anything, the imaging would be the only real standout of this headphone. It also can do large-scale music extraordinarily well. It might not sound that wide, but it does sound big, especially in the vertical sense. It tends to stretch things to a great extent, probably because of the driver's shape, which is a pretty tall rectangle. The timber, while not top of the line level, isn't annoying. It just has a slight tint of plastic in nature. Sounds are separated in a way that leaves spaces in between them. You can easily tell where one instrument ends and the other one starts. Detail retrieval is very inoffensive. You have to try to hear the underlying detail, hidden elements of the music, but it's surely available to you. It just doesn't scream details at you, like the Ananda Nano or even the Sundara. That's mostly related to the frequency response being tamed down in the top registers. Nevertheless, it's a fairly resolving headphone. Not the most, far from that actually, but it's not lacking. This headphone generally gives you a taste of high-end at a price that's usually not associated with high-end products of this category. It doesn't have one single thing it shines at. Rather, it's a combination of all things that make it a genuinely satisfying package.